Hello and welcome back to the Offensive Line. On this episode, we have my friend Victor Diaz here, another member of our church, Redeemer's Grace Church, to share his experiences with evangelism and particularly his use of the question, what motivates you? So Victor, do you have any thoughts on this question? Have you ever used this question in evangelism? I actually think it's a very fun question to use uh, because it it allows you to really kind of set a casual conversation mm. and where a person doesn't really put up their barriers. It really does help you allow to assess their own thinking patterns yeah. and seeing where they're at. I think a lot of people nowadays, uh, every single individual is looking for motivation. They're looking for motivation in you know, just the reality that we're in a sinful world. And because of that, you know, there's griefs, there is um, hardships, yeah. there is death, yeah, and um, there's just overall evil in the world. And uh, I think the huge factor about life is that everyone will inevitably face death. Mm. And the, the reality of that is that our time is limited on this earth. Yeah, that, that reminds me, now that you bring that up, in our singles ministry, which I know that you're a leader in and that you're a part of, our brother Tim is actually going through the book of Ecclesiastes, which I think is a huge um, kind of tie-in that you can share as well. So how is that? And do you ever use any of the things that Tim talks about in his lessons in your evangelism? Ecclesiastes is just a very good book to kind of go off of. You see Solomon, he's kind of trying to look for meaning uh, to life. Sure. All, all apart from God. Yeah. It's similar to how the world thinks this day and age. Uh, they're trying to find meaning uh, apart from God, mm. and they're trying to find fulfillment apart from God. But the reality is that we weren't created uh, for this reason. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a good point you bring up. A lot of times in our evangelism conversations, I don't know about you, but for me, definitely having conversations with people where they always say, the reason for why they can't believe in Christianity or they don't want to believe in Christianity is because it's so restrictive. It keeps them from doing this and this and this and this. But then you just look in the book of Ecclesiastes, like you're saying, and you know, Solomon actually did do all of these things. And then he came to the conclusion, there's no meaning in life apart from Christ. So switching gears a little bit, um, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts since this is, this series is about you know, the, these conversations you can have, these evangelism conversations you can have, and the use of this particular question, what would determine you using this question about motivation in life, as opposed to say a question about objective good, objective truth, and the definition of that? What kind of trigger point in the conversation would you have that lets you think, okay, I'm gonna use this question, ask this person this question? I would use this question when seeing someone who is uh, looking for hope, who is uh, essentially they're working really hard, mm. they're working two jobs, um, and I actually, you know, just see what is, what is, what exactly motivates them to work so hard. A lot of time they, you know, they refer to children, uh, trying to provide for the children. Yeah. Um, they want to save up for a house, mm. you know, they want to, you know, buy, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, a condo, a house, uh, they want to, uh, you know, pave a way for their children to be uh, financially free, mm. you know, yeah. one day. I like to use that question because uh, a lot of their motivation is very temporal. Sure. A lot of those things that they are motivated by will eventually deplete or come to an end. In, in, in a sense so you know you think about children you know the children will end up growing up one day or you know they get a house then what happens after that sure you yeah. know i like to use that question because um i think you know christ obviously is the perfect motivation yeah. to do to live yeah i mean then you can talk about what our motivation is as christians what it, the motivation should be which is to obey christ which is to honor god to bring glory to his name. Uh, that is the motivation for everyone on this channel that has been on this channel so far. So you can share about that and how that is, again, like we said in Ecclesiastes, what Solomon concluded. That is what life is all about. That's the only thing that gives meaning to life. That should be our motivation. I think about 
the motivation that we have and i think it's it's just awesome because god literally sets it out all for us he mm. paves the way he saves us um not only does he save us but he actually gives us his spirit mm. which actually gives us the power to actually live for him mm. so you think about that he had already predestined ephesians uh, 2 10 uh, actually says for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them so you think about that and it's pretty neat to know that uh, even before we even were saved god already had lined up uh, good works for us to walk inside of so I think about that and it's very motivating to know that I'm meant to live this life with him and that he actually um, helps direct me towards the actual path that he wants me to go to mm -hmm. uh, in order to fulfill it yeah look, looking in the Old Testament for example like you're talking about with uh, the the new covenant that we have as Christians in the Old Testament the Mosaic law God gave to Moses to give to the people to the Jewish people about do this, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And then they continued on for the rest of the Old Testament trying to obey that because they thought, you know, if I do these things, that's how I get to God. But rather we can share about how, you know, now in the New Testament, because of the new covenant, we do these things because God has changed us and actually paved the way, like you were saying, given us everything that we need in order to do these things. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's really awesome that you have that the heart for evangelism and wanting and thinking about how you can use this question. The viewers want to get to know you. At our church, we have a lot of examples of evangelism, people who are great evangelists. And I think you are one of those people. I can think of all the people, different people you brought out to our church and people that you've shared the gospel with. So how is your evangelism? Uh, what are some evangelism opportunities that you've had recently? Whether it's using this question or not, and uh, how can we be getting to know you better in your evangelism, and how can we be, be praying for you? Yeah, um, so I usually, I, I always like to share Christ to everyone uh, at my work. I have the, the privilege to be able to manage a team of about 20 to 30 people, and actually, gives me the privilege to actually share God's word in Spanish uh, on an occasion. One of the most recent is uh, just having a, a long interaction between me and my barber. He comes down from, you know, Southern, Southern San Diego, uh, which is literally where I grew up. It's not the most, you know, best uh, area to live in. Uh, so there's a lot of problems, you know, very typical problems that I'm very familiar with and what the Lord actually saved me from. So it's been neat to be able to kind of interact with him and just to keep on being patient. Most of all, just trying to show a heart of compassion to him, sure. showing that I do care about him, that I actually care for him to really challenge the way he thinks about things, the way he views things, because yeah. the way he actually views things is is in a way that he actually sees that he's lost. Yeah. Um, wow. And I think that that really does play into uh, seeing that they need something that they don't know that they need. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I'm able to actually bring to them Christ, which is the answer to all things. Yeah. That's always kind of the goal, right? Is to get them to see that they are lost without Christ. And I think it's neat that you're able to use those opportunities and, and see that there's all these different people who are lost because they've already realized that they're lost, that there's something that they need. The purpose of her life actually is Christ, right? So thank you again for, for sharing um, your thoughts and your evangelism experiences. Again, we are The Offensive Line, and you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Please like our video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. If you want to know more about everything, anything that we've said on this channel, if you want to know more about Victor and some of the things that he said, even shared, I even want to know about his testimony, which he kind of referenced a little bit, having grown up in, in South San Diego, then please leave a comment down below and then we'll try to get back to you promptly. Maybe I'll have Victor answer the comment um, himself. But for now, we are the offensive line and uh, our series this season is Great Evangelists Ask Great Questions. And we'll see you next time.